Hi guys and welcome to the Sunderland vs Chef Wednesday match review where Sunderland have just come away with, <laughs> believe it or not, a 5-0 win. They have absolutely torn Chef Wednesday a new one. I did not expect that at all. Uh, I also just want to say before we get into it, uh, a massive sort of thank you for your guys' patience and your sort of messages and best wishes and stuff because um, I'm still riddled <laughs> to the brim with COVID. I can barely string a sentence together without... Uh, breaking into a coughing fit so i might only do this for about three four minutes honestly guys i know i always say that they end up rambling on but um i'm fighting not to <laughs> cough all over the camera right now um but yeah what an absolutely amazing result it was absolutely a, a cup final atmosphere at the soul this evening and rightly so as well chef wednesday i think they were unbeaten in 12 or 13 you know last time we played them at hillsborough we got battered three nil we, we looked nowhere near their level in that game so i thought you know this could be a really, really difficult test. And it was, you know, it was. I think 5-0 may be slightly unfair in terms of, you know, particularly in the first half, even though we're absolutely ruthless going forward. You know, they did make, you know, sort of chances of their own or they didn't look absolutely terrible. You know, it wasn't the same as sort of Doncaster, you know, whereas I actually thought the first goal originally, it was uh, slightly against the run of play in terms of they were controlling the possession. We were sitting quite deep. Then as soon as we got that first goal with Ross Stewart, we just, we just were relentless. We were absolutely relentless. Our press were moving up a little bit because when they started off quite strongly, I felt like we were sitting a bit too deep. And I thought, I hope this isn't the way we're going to go. But we managed to nick away on the break. Ross Stewart, it was arguably offside, but who gives a shit? I'm not going to complain. So we got the first one and then we just kept going. We didn't stop. It ended up being 3 0 at half time. Absolute frigging bliss. Amazing. You know, and in the end as well, over the course of 90 minutes, Stewart gets himself a hat trick. Uh, you know, Kim Pioca gets himself one and all, as well as Doyle. He got one in the first half as well. That'd be great for him because he's deserved it. He's been phenomenal over the last uh, over the last few games for me. I think Doyle's been really, really good, particularly against Doncaster, which, you know, it isn't saying much because Doncaster were very, very poor. But, <clears throat> sorry, he was very, very good. And tonight it was just the press and the togetherness of the players. You know, you've got Embleton and Pritchard. There's completely different beasts over the last couple of games. Like Pritchard is growing in confidence with every game. Embleton as well. They're so, so creative. And then you've got Diaku, who again, he's even getting better defensively. Diaku, a couple of times this evening, he's tracking back, hitting players hard and, you know, getting stuck in. And it's just so good to see. It just feels like everyone's moving in the same direction. Everyone knows what they're doing defensively. I'm going to give a shout out to Tom Flanagan because I, don't, I feel like, um, because it, yeah, I'm so used to him now, particularly over the course of the season, or for the majority of the season anyway, we, you know, when we went through that sort of blip, um, he was you know really, really poor, but as were a lot of players. But when I'm not mentioning Tom Flanagan a lot, it's probably because I've just generally got used to him playing, you know, at a sort of 7 or 8 out of 10 per game. And we just kind of, when we're, when we're beating teams 3-4-0, you generally tend to miss out the, the praise that should be given to the defenders. But Tom Flanagan, he's been so good this season. You know, I've seen on... On Twitter the other day, I was saying that it's mad that, you know, if you told me last season that Tom Flanagan was going to be keeping Bailey Wright out of his natural position, I thought you'd be taking the piss, but he's been that good. He's been really good. He's a real leader there. He's so solid. He's so clever when he's shielding the ball, letting it go out of play. And he's just been absolutely phenomenal. He really has. He was winning everything, absolutely everything against Patterson tonight, and he was getting really wound up. How the hell he didn't get at least a buck in that lad? He was just like a, a spoiled brat, like a child, waving his arms around all the time, leaving uh, leaving ones and on, leaving challenges on our players, little elbows here and there, which you get with players like Patterson, but still some of them were pretty blatant and were getting completely ignored. You know, and we could have got even more. We really could. It could have been six or seven with some of the chances we were making. Like I say, we're so creative off the ball. We're constantly moving. We're, constantly, we're just not letting our foot off the pedal. That's something that we've had issues with in the past under previous management, and this is why we need to give it to LJ. Because he's obviously drilled it into the players where, you know, he's not telling them to obviously just get in front and sit on it. That very clearly isn't the case. Where in the past, you know, with likes of Parkey and other, other managers, you know, Jack Ross at times, um, there was absolutely periods where they were trying to get us in front and they were absolutely, you can see it was very clear as day, that we're trying to sit on a lead. And then that's when we get the stupid one all draws, when we're battering sides. We got that far too many times at Jack Ross. It become famous for it. It started happening with Parkey. We'd, we'd batter a team. As soon as we get in front, we'd sit back and the momentum would change. It would shift and we'd sit back and accept in pressure. And we're not doing that under Lee Johnson. Regardless of who we're up against, we are going for it. And, it's, you know, sometimes you can come away with a battering, which is very frustrating. But uh, when you come away with a 5 0 winning against Chef Wednesday, who, like I say, they were unbeaten in like 12 13 or however long it was. You can't help but be absolutely buzzing now. <coughs> I'm going to leave it there, guys, because uh, I'm going to vomit. 
So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. Again, thank you so much for the, the wishes and everything. I hope you all had an amazing Christmas and what have you. And uh, I'll probably see you uh, in the new year. Hopefully, um, I'm COVID-free over the next co couple of days or at some point over the next two or three days. So uh, I can uh, leave my house, which would be nice. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I hope you're all well. Have an amazing one. And uh, hit the like button if you're buzzing that suddenly just won 5-0 against Chef Wednesday because I am absolutely buzzing. Uh, but I'll leave it there, guys. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and uh, the videos will be longer and better in the future. But you take care and stay jamming.